Right, we're going to move on to cricket. But yeah, obviously the Ashes walk. We will be walking the Ashes from test match to test match, all in support of the world's having us. We will keep you updated with how we're going with that. And as soon as we're we're ready to announce the big launch of it and where you can make donations, etc., we will obviously tell you in with that. But yeah, something where it's going to be really hard. We all, I, I woke up stiff this morning. But you know, first one, we get fitter, we get stronger, it'll get easier. And so it's something that we're all really looking forward to. Cricket then, there's quite a lot going on. SA20 and BBL today... Two fantastic games. The Eastern Kent Sunrisers beat Mumbai Indians Cape Town with three balls to spare, which was really exciting. And even more exciting, Brisbane Heat actually ended Melbourne Stars' opportunity to even make the top five in the BBL today. As Matt Renshaw, who doesn't play the lap, walked right out of stump and lapped a ball for full on the last ball of the game. So yeah, fantastic. Huge. I think you watched them. Yeah, I did. I mean, the interview, post-interview with Renshaw was phenomenal because the number nine batsman who came in to support him, gave him the advice, I think you should play the lap shot, to which Matt Renshaw doesn't normally do. And he went, yeah, I think you're right. So, yeah, that was really interesting that he took advice on 86 or 50 balls from a number nine. So it just shows you the BBL does show up a couple of surprises, but yeah, phenomenal game. Yeah, BBL's shown an interesting couple of things. I've learned some new rules when they play at the stadium with a roof. If you hit the roof, that's six. I mean, I would score hundreds for fun. The amount of balls that I sky. Yeah. BBL's been good. The games I've seen have looked, looked decent. Yeah, I mean, like we spoke about last week, some of the players have now left, but some of the Aussie guys have come in. So that's kind of worked nicely, really. Yeah, that's an odd one. The one about the roof. Joe Clark top hedge one, and it went literally straight up. Twice. The keeper would have caught it behind his back. And uh, it donged the roof. No, that's sick. You could just see the bowl. Of, hang on a minute. What? They introduced it, didn't they? Because Aaron Finch beamed one. I absolutely smashed one. He's hit, hit it twice and launched one that would have gone out of the MCG, never mind that indoor stadium, and hit the roof. And that back then it was called a dead ball. And then he did it again the year after and struck it nicely, really well. And it would have gone miles over the road. But I do think the one that goes straight up, there ought to be like a ring in the roof or something that that, that well, changes it. But the thing I don't understand is why, if you play in the laws of cricket, if you play at a ground like overhanging branches or trees that grow onto the ground it's four local rules though sometimes it's six sometimes it's four they each mm. local rules don't get... well okay but you know what i did find interesting post interview with all of that stuff going on they said well they think the umpire should make a call on whether it was game for six or not and i went well hang on are you going to make a call on whether the person caught the ball too because we've seen some catches drop during these games yes. so i'm going well hang on you're assuming that they're going to catch the ball and look 90 percent of the time they do but We've some, seen some goobers drop during the BBL and the SA20. So there's so many unknowns from my perspective. I think six is the right call. I mean, it's only happened twice, I think, play yeah. on. Yeah. All well, the cricket going on. Josh De Silva got in touch with me today just to get a bit more kit. He's bloody professionals. One of loads of free kit off me. West Indies are flying out to Zimbabwe on Saturday. So very good luck to you there, Josh. Currently going on in Zimbabwe, they're playing, they've played a T20 international series against Ireland. Interesting fact, a uh, friend of the pod, Mark Adair, was able to hand his brother Ross his international cap. They played together in this series. And Ross, on I think he's maybe second or third game, got 65 or 47 balls. So yeah, not often that you see two brothers playing international cricket together. But unfortunately, Ireland have lost that series, I believe, 2-1. India against Sri Lanka. Coley, another 100. Simon, I know you've got some mad stats on Coley and records that he's breaking and what have you. But I think then they beat... Sri Lanka by 317 runs. In one yeah, it's the biggest ever winning margin in a one day wow. international. Yeah. yeah Co-, Co is on 46 one day 100. Only... Oh, I did see a stat and they had it compared to Ricky Pontin and Sachin Tendulkar. See what oh. I did there? And I mean, Sachin had played, I think, 483 one days and Ricky yeah. had played 361. And he's almost got the same amount of one day hundreds. I will say one day. It's the one day stuff. It doesn't, don't compare test with the rest of the boys. But yeah, I mean, yeah. phenomenal player. In a, and out the, what was it? What was the other one? Out of the six to the most hundreds against an individual team, he's got three of the top six. So he's got, he's Shlanka. top with 10. Yeah, 10 Shlanka. against Sri Lanka, and then he's nine against Australia or something like that. And then whatever. But he's got 10, nine, and eight against three, three nations and 10 Dorkers. Second and Rowan Sharma and then one team. So, yeah. 
the ITL20, now I haven't paid much attention to this, but the lineups, so I'm going to know where I'm going to look at before, it seems like the only T20 competition where there are no local players playing, or like maybe one per side. It's literally, a, the lineups are all superstars. It looks that way, but it, 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 I don't know, there is some massive names playing in it, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's not. But it, it strikes me, I mean, this is, it might not be like, it, it seems like a bit of an exhibition type Jolly Boys outing. Mm. When someone's obviously decided to throw a bit of money at it and go, oh yeah, we'll get these lads, we'll get some others, and we'll just let them play golf and then twat it for a bit and then play a it's bit like, more golf. And then it, it, it seems a bit of a rogue one, if I'm honest. And, and I don't know, part of me quite likes, like we talk about the SAT20 and the Big Bash and IPL, Package Gun Super League, all those, where you only have four overseas players, providing those overseas players are of suitable quality and they're not getting pickles or overseas players that we can and can't argue may or may not have happened in 100. But I think there's a bit of a, you'd have thought UAE or Upcoming Nation or certainly places around there, even if they got some of the Afghani lads and they incorporated them in the group and whatever, you'd have thought that they're, they're missing a trick somewhere for the development of cricket. Yeah, it's going to be interesting and people might want to go and watch. I don't know. I've not seen any of the games to know whether anyone's going to watch it, but it's not normally been renowned for its wealth of supporters, fans in the stands as cricket in the UAE and that kind of place. So I don't know. Interesting then stats for, so for Joe Root today. He was run out by his mate James Vince. The six of the 11 balls have been batted for 36 minutes. I think That'd James Vince probably did him a favour. Well, that or was it Robin Utapur or something that was yeah. batting yeah. with him? I mean, I thought he'd retired in around 1997. I think he did. He's just come from one well, that's jolly. It just, and he still Long scored quicker than Joe Root. No, I don't know. I don't, it's obviously, I'm all for cricketers going and earning money, and that's and it's their prerogative, but there's just. It does strike me as with all the other cricket that's going off at the minute. You look at the Big Bash, you look at the South Africa at League and that kind of thing. It's not high on my priority list, shall we say? No, no. It is, as you say, a jolly because, I mean, I was just looking at the lineup of one of the sides and they had Gleeson, Vissa, Jordan, Liam Dawson, and Rahan. I mean, five of the six bowlers are all overseas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of them, uh, Sanchez Sharma, he is a UAN 19 player travelled the most unfortunately but yeah I mean it's very much an exhibition with very few locals by the looks of things yeah. it, seems, it seems a shame really because then it's just a, throw a load of money at a load of international lads so you with three week go at it's in a white ball as far as they can in, the, in Dubai and playing some nice golf course I've just had a bit of a flashback actually to when we interviewed Pike Paul Franks talking about the T10 and he was talking about with coaching and because they've obviously got the same, a similar kind of rule where you're only allowed a certain amount of overseas players and he was talking about how difficult it was because you basically got clubbies, well, glorified clubbies, playing with Paul Sterling yeah. or these guys. And so I can, I can kind of see what they're doing, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's not something that I'll be honest, I've got. Yeah, maybe. I've saw Hales, he got 83, which I'm trying room for, but. Maybe it's a case of, and again, we need to do some more digging into this so we've got our flag straight, but maybe it's a case of bring these odds in, let all the local lads actually train with them, learn from them, be around them. Maybe that's the point of it. Maybe we're doing it a bit of a disservice. I don't know. Uh, maybe we can have a look at that before we maybe make a public apology next week to the three people that listen. Do, do you know what? The, I mean, uh, you know, I know we are going to move on to the SA20 at some stage, yeah, but personally, I've really enjoyed the development of South African talent coming through and watching some of the youngsters coming through in that SA20. And I haven't seen much of that in the international T20, unfortunately. I, well, unless you guys have spotted any young youth no. coming through from the no, UAE. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, now that you've brought it up, we might as well move on to the SA20. I really like it. I do too, actually. I mean, it's got it's gaining traction, isn't it? There's been a fair bit of traction gained to some of the wickets. Has there? I've noticed. What I mean is the scores have been really good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's I been, there hasn't been a 15 all out or a 25 all out like the BBL. So hang on, what are you talking about? No, I agree. I watched Michael Nisa swing it round corners to Joe Clark this morning. Hola, hey. Jeez, he is. Yeah. I mean, look, I, we talked about this off air and obviously I've, I've said that a bit tongue in cheek, to this bit I said, but the thing T20 kind of, and maybe this is the, the game moving forward, I don't know. I am all for, as we often talk about on here, bowlers having a, it's not about bowlers bowling badly. I mean, that's one of Simon's gripes, like, 
being planted into the middle of next week, every ball for 20 overs. I just don't think, maybe for me to say that I don't think the wickets have been great is the wrong thing. Maybe the batters are approaching it in the wrong way, but as we all agreed on before we came on air, all of the runs in the SAT, SA20 so far have been scored very much outside of the first power play. There's every side seems to be four down inside the first six overs. Now, is that poor batting? Is that good bowling? Is it, is it the wickets on? Maybe they've got a bit too much juice in them at first, or is it an amalgamation of all three? Look, it, it's... I saw one, you know, I've watched a couple of the games, but one particular game that springs to mind is JSK against the Cape Town Indian, as they should have been called. When I saw the first two balls and George Linder had it first ball, bowled it full, and it literally pitched on middle of the leg and missed off stump. Yeah. And we're standing there going, all he's got to do is make it bound. All he's got to do. And he then proceeded to bowl the next two halfway down, got whacked for full, and then bowled it full again, and mm-hmm. that was it. Eight off the first, eight off the first over. Sam Curran then bowled the second one, bowled cutters, but then bowled two absolute rank long off, got it for nine. But then you've got Rashid Khan, the other left arm wrist spin bowler, was spinning it ridiculously. I mean, he got the left arm wrist spin had got Fakhtig the out with one that he bowled it about 64 miles an hour. It pitched on off stump, came back in the middle and leg from just back of the lane and it hit the very top, planted two poles out of the ground. And you saw a fact deeper seats, then they're going, oh, what can I Odin do about Smith. that? Yeah. And then, yeah, Odin Smith bowled someone with an in-swing Yorker that started at about gully. So I did think that, and that was one where JSK got 105. I, mean, I think, I'll be honest, they did well to get 105, and then Mumbai and uh, Cape Town knocked it off with four overs to go or whatever. But I think, in general, I like there's a bit of competition. I think what it has, I don't think the standard of bowling's been great. I know you just said there's been some decent youngsters coming through. I, I've not been that impressed with the bowling at all, if I'm honest. Not just from the local lads, but from some of the more experienced people. I don't know whether it's because some of the standards we saw at the T20 World Cup were so high, and at the start of the Big Bash, the standard of bowling was very good, and whether this is just a bit of a fall-off or whatever. I mean, can get, Rabada looked like he was bowling with a different ball to everyone else but about two or three overs the other day. But yeah, it's good because it's competitive. And that's the thing for me. If it makes cricket competitive, if sides are getting bowled out for 105, fine. If, and if sides are knocking them off in 18 overs for six, seven down, fine. No problem. It's, you've got to find a way to win the game. And that, for me, is part of the art of cricket. It's not just dinging the ball over Table Mountain or which other as appropriate landscape is available. Landscape you want to <laughs> be playing at. But I don't know. It's, yeah. It's all getting a bit much for me, the T20 stuff at the minute. I'll be honest. It, there's a lot of it on, and I don't think it's great. I think what we're seeing is a lot of watered-down average cricket. 